Hi guys, welcome to part 5 of this Lotus 99T build. At the end of part 4, I finished clear coating the main body parts. Because of the thickness of the decal, after clear coating, the decal film will show up quite clearly. Of course you can skip this procedure if you want to keep it simple, but I would like to show you the method that most car modelers use to get an overall glittering shine. The method is very simple. That is to smooth out the clear coat by sanding. Simple it may be, but you must do this very carefully. Here I use a very fine grit sanding stick, uh, maybe 1200 grit. I cut the sanding stick into shape so it can get into tight areas. Make sure you use a flat backing for sanding because you want a smooth finishing afterward. Never just use your fingers for it because it tends to sand down the edges a lot more. Here I'm sanding other parts such as the rear wing, the end plates to the rear wing here flat sanding is particularly important Then we come to the end plates of the front wings. And these are the end results of the sanding. When you don't see any shininess around the edges of the decals, you know you have a very smooth surface. And I'll wash all the parts and have them ready for the final coat of clear coat. One thing I forgot to mention is you must make sure the clear coat is completely dry before sanding. I usually wait for a week at least. Next is to do some detail painting. Here I'm going to paint the uh, safety belt. Here I used three shades of blue from Vallejo's model color range. For me, they are one of the best media for hand painting. I simply put them on a wet tower and use a paper plate as a palette and thin the paint with tap water. To paint such small details, I use the best brush I have. Winston Newton Series 7. And here I use a size one brush. And you can see the brush come to a point even after eight years of usage. As I mentioned in some of my previous video, I usually use very thin paint and build them up layer by layer. That's how I achieve smooth gradation. I start applying a middle tone of the blue to all the belts. This I also do it layer by layer until the bell has a solid blue color. Well, it discharge um, the extra paint on the brush onto a tissue paper and actually there are more than enough paint remain on the brush for painting. It's actually much easier to control the amount of paint you want to put down on the surface.
after a solid mid-tone color is achieved, I start layering the highlight and shadow onto the seat belts. This is a long process, but it will give you a very nice three-dimensional end result. Here is a close-up shot, and you can see how I slowly build up the light area. And if I accidentally have put the blue plane onto the black seats, I use Vallejo's airbrush cleaner to wash it off from the seats which was painted with lacquer. And if required, I can always go back to the shadow area with a darker shade of blue. I keep layering the light and the dark area of the belts until I'm happy with it. Here I consider the belt finish. You can see that I have clear varnished the belt buckles. It is because I want to paint it with my hand paint chrome.
the safety belt is done. Next is the gearbox. The gearbox calls for a dark metal color. I use model color natural steel. Once again, I use a layering method to create a more three-dimensional effect. Here is the finished rear suspension area with the gearbox. Here I have clear coat the body parts. They may look very nice and shiny. To get a perfect finish, they still need to go through the final polishing process. And I have polished the end plates of the rear wing. And this is the effect I'm trying to go for, for the rest of the body parts. That brings us to the end of this part. I always thought I can finish it sooner, but it always takes longer than I thought. So please wait for my part 6. I am sure I will have this finished by then. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye bye.